Let's talk about how to remove a note. We find the key. So that would be in priority queue we call that the pop operation. But in the associative array, that's the delete key. In the delete key function, of course, we need to provide a key. So the first thing we need to searching for the key. For example, earlier we tried to find Mary. If we want to try to find Mary to delete that key, we will try to find that. Then we find out actually we don't have Mary in our binary search tree. So then you don't have to do anything. So delete key, the first thing is if we didn't find the key, actually we do nothing. However, if we did find the key, for example, now I want to delete Fred. So then I will find here is the thread. So we need to remove the thread. So on the other hand, to remove the thread, we should think about is how we will replace thread, right? So instead you just remove, delete this note. Actually is you will keep this note. Then you will find, do you have any other note is suitable to replace the thread? Right. So you think about now I don't I want to overwrite the information in thread. How should I do that? Can I use color or mark? If I have the color to remove to copy over the color information, is that right? No, right? Because if you see here, if color move to here, then all the left side note should be less than color. Remember, that's the binary search tree. All the left note should be smaller than your top note. All the right note should be greater than your top note. So when you find the top note, you try to replace. We need to find the greatest one from the left tree or the smallest one from the right tree. You see, is that right? The greatest value from the left subtree or the smallest value from the right subtree. Right, so that's why either Lucy can go up so you see Lucy were greater than all the left subtree and smaller than the rest of the right. Or we can use Denise. So then if Denise go up, you see all the note from the left hand side was smaller than Denise. And the all the note from the right hand side will be greater than Denise. So that's the way we want to do when we do the delete key. So the first thing we see the delete key. So that's the delete key. So the first thing we still need to do the searching part. So we set the P equal to the root note. And we still need the brief note. Because when we have the brief, we can use the brief to check if that's the note, the note we want to remove, that's the root note. Or later when we try to promote, we know where they will go. So that's why we still have a brief. So just like earlier, uh, when we have the P not equal to zero, if we find the key, right, that's we break. So then we will continue to do what we should do. Otherwise, right, see the brief equal to the P. So then if the key greater than the key P refer to, we go to the right hand side. Otherwise, we go to the left hand side. So from here to here, you will see they are still the same thing we need to do for the searching part. So before we continue, so that's see here, actually we have many different possible outcome we need to consider after the searching. So after the searching loop, the first thing, if P equal to zero, that's me. Actually, after you finish the whole tree, you didn't find the match key. So that's why we do nothing. We just simply return. 
Then the second and the third situation is the note actually they are at the bottom. What does that mean? That means, for example, Ruther is the one I find. I just need to delete that. So actually, if the ruler doesn't have left children or right children, I just delete that note, right? So then here, actually, my mark or my proof, either their right children or left children need to assign to zero. That's one situation if you don't have uh, left children or right children. Or the last situation, the second situation is you only have one note. That's me. I find the Fred, but Fred doesn't have any children. So no left children, no right children. So this one is the last note. That's mean the brief also zero. If this one is the last note as the root note, we just simply deallocate that root note and we assign to zero. That's the second and that's the second situation that we say you only have the root note. So both left children, right children, and the zero and the proof they are both they are all zero. So then the third one is if your your proof is not equal to zero, but your left children and right children they are zero. So we just need to deallocate the p. So then we have already the proof, no uh, the proof information right. So we set the proof left children or right children to zero. So then the last two actually is the difficult one like earlier we said. We can have either to find the right note, the great, uh, the smallest one from the right descendant, or we find the greatest from the left hand side. So to this situation, we can think about we just see which one we prefer first. So then you can see here we can say okay if the p left equal to zero. So anyway, we just looking for the right. The smallest note from the right to promote your P. Otherwise, we always favor the left hand side. So no matter you, if you both have left children or the right children, so then we will just do here. We always start from the left descendant. We find the greatest one to promote the P. So we will focus on the four and five later. So we see here after your searching loop, one, two, three actually will be pretty simple, like here. The first one, your note not find, so it just return. P is not equal to zero. Ah,、uh, P is zero, so then we return. So then the situation is your P left equal to zero, and your P right also equal to zero, and your proof also equal to zero. So that's why you will see here that will be our second case. We just need to make our root note equal to zero. Otherwise, you will see here. This one we will make your proof left equal equal to p. So then your proof left equal to zero. Otherwise, your proof right equal to zero. But no matter which one, the two or three case. They all need to delete the p to release that note. So then we decrement the size. Then we finish. So here, why we know we will make the proof left equal to zero? That's because originally proof left equal to p. So that's why we can we need to、um, remove that to replace with the zero. But actually, p still refer to the node, right? So we still can use the p to delete the dynamic allocation. So after we finish the case one, two, three, so see we see the case four. So the case four is our p left equal to zero, but right is not. So that's why we need to promote the right tree. So that's why when we promote the right tree, we need to find the smallest node. From the right subtree to promote to the p, so this one we can see they were similar like this. Okay, so you will see here. I want to remove Fred, so I need to find the smallest one from the right tree. So don't you agree? Actually, in order to find the smallest one, I know the smallest one actually is on the left hand side. So that's why what we need to do is we need to from the Fred. After we find the Fred, we need to save this location. 
because this location is later we need to uh, promote the new value to here. So afterward, we need to continue to go with the P to traverse. So that's why here, the first step actually need to go right. So then if you have left children, you just need to continue to go. So that's what we call that's the dancing step. When you want to find the smallest one in your right subtree, you need to go to the right side, then left, 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 until you find the left one. So on the other hand, this one you can also see. If you want to find the greatest one from the left hand side, you just need to go the left hand side, then right, right. So if you don't have normal right, the last one, the right, will be the greatest one for, to promote that. Okay, so did you see that? Try to see the dancing step to see you agree. You find the smallest one from the left tree or the greatest one from the right tree. So we just say here, since we want to promote the right hand side, right? So after we find Lucy, right? So then since earlier, we already saved this note. So after we find the Lucy, if Lucy is the last one on the left hand side, so then we will just overwrite, actually just overwrite Lucy's information with, um, actually you overwrite Fred's information with Lucy. So then you need to see how you will delete this note. So in order to delete this note, actually just make this note the proof left hand left children become zero. Okay, so here actually it's a little complicated. So then let me show you the code. So when we do the case four, so this one actually is after your if left p left equal to zero. So then inside the brushes, so then we'll continue here. So you see this one, right? Earlier we find the P, so we need to save this note. So then we start using the pref equal to P, so P equal to the P right. So if you have P equal to P right, right? So that's why the first step, you need to go to the right hand side. Then after what, you need to always go to the left. So when you go left, you need to see, you need to set, set, set your proof equal to P. So then P equal to the P left. So after you done this one, no matter you have left or not, uh, if you don't have the left, you see here just becomes zero. So that's why you won't continue. Okay, so that's why when you have P equal to the P right, if you don't have any left children, right, the last one P equal to the P right. But if you have your left children, you just continue go to the left. So after this loop, we will have the P is the target P we have. So that's why we we'll overwrite the target P here to overwrite from the to the save key. So then here the save the save note value will also equal to the um the smallest note we find in the right hand side. So here is after you overwrite. So from this point, we need to see how should we delete. So right, we need to delete the P, but the most important thing is after we delete the P, right, we also need to make sure our proof can be assigned to that. So this one actually the same as before. If your proof left equal to the P, so that's earlier we see the Denise, uh, the Lucy, right, you see, if your proof is marked, if the proof left equal to Lucy, right? So that's me, our proof left, I need to assign to zero. So that's why here, if your proof left equal to P, so then your proof left equal to the P, uh, here actually the right. Okay, so you will see here, if your proof left equal, equal, equal to P, so actually your proof left, why is not equal to P is equal to P right. So we see here, because one possible situation, Lucy can have the right children, right? Because the right children is greater than Lucy. So that's why the mark left need to assign to the Lucy right. But if Lucy doesn't have right children, then mark left just equal to zero. So the else proof right equal to the right. 
just in case is this one. Okay, so that's the right hand side. 